also if you can introduce our speaker and we can keep moving. So uh, welcome to our, our first Great. Tuesday. Yeah, the October 1st Tuesday. Uh, thanks for coming, everyone. Um, I'll just point out the, the NP speakers that we have coming up. That's, they're on screen right now and they're going to flip around. We have two. We have a brown uh, uh, fall. Um, David Borton from Brown. He's more of, a, of an engineer and a technology development person. He's coming on October 21st. George Wittenberg, I think, is a PM&R physician. Does our people, do anybody know? He's a, he's a physician, and he's coming on November 18th. Not coming. He's speaking. Um, he's actually coming from Pittsburgh, not Brown. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't catch well, that. My fault. Okay, so he's coming. Yeah, he's coming in person. Yeah, he's driving. Kate Peterson, an alum, a proud alum of the Case uh, Neural Engineering Center. Uh, he's been he's been uh, a prominent person in the medical device industry for a long time, and he's coming on. Or he's not coming. That's via Zoom. It says right there. Um, from Galvani, which is, uh, you know, a Google related um, uh, company. So we have some pretty nice speakers coming up and I encourage everyone to, uh, to show up for those. And we have a speaker today and I'm gonna turn it over to Asef to introduce uh, Jonathan. Thank you, Dr. Kirsch. Um, hello everyone, uh, John uh, Jonathan Cunningham uh, is today's speaker. Jonathan comes from a very unique background and he wants to do very unique and very interesting thing, which we believe hopefully will be very impactful for all that we do because our goal is ultimately to get all of our research to patients. So Jonathan uh, mentioned to me that his interest is technology dissemination. And um, he's also not only the nurse practitioner and the registered nurse, but he's also uh, hopefully soon he will start PhD in nursing school and he will be working with myself, um, Matthew Plough, who is also here and uh, hopefully more colleagues in FES Center. Uh, so without any delay, Jonathan, stage is yours. Thank you. I wanna thank everyone for allowing me to come today and speak with you guys. Um, so I wanted just to initially talk about um, my background. Um, as Dr. Sheikh has alluded to, um, it's pretty unique, but I started my career in, um, uh, with the Cleveland Clinic. I've been with, been with them for quite some time now. Uh, earlier in my career, I was a staff nurse where I worked in the emergency department, um, and we took care of patients, uh, your typical emergency department patient, uh, so ACS patients, uh, stroke patients, uh, GI complaint patients, respiratory complaint patients. I was quickly promoted uh, to an assistant nurse manager, where I had a number of accomplishments there, where I participated um, in what's called a management training program, where we learn about finance and how to, um, how to manage an emergency room and work with staff uh, and to develop, develop new staff. Um, I was selected to work on a number of committees, <clears throat> excuse me, including resuscitation committee, um, workplace violence committee, uh, the falls committee, and most of my time there within the committees was working on data aggregation. I was selected to speak at a number of conferences, um, one being the ASAP conference uh, in Denver, Colorado, more geared towards emergency physicians, where I sp spoke about violence in the uh, emergency room and how to deal with um, uh, patients who uh, have um, uh, dementia or Alzheimer's. Uh, also was a panelist uh, in the 2018 um, SHIELD conference, uh, where we talked about safety and healthcare um, from an educational and from um, uh, information and also learning and development side. And in 2019, I was selected as a, as a safety champion award winner, uh, which was awesome, um, which also became a, one of the lead stories and a magnet um, uh, consideration for uh, the Cleveland Clinic at Lutheran. Um, so recently, like Dr. Shake said, uh, recently I'm a, a Kent State grad. My focus was adult geriatric acute care nursing. Um, uh, I manage patients, uh, acute patients or chronic patients, mostly in the ICU setting, but also some internal medicine. 
Um, the real gist of why I'm here is to focus on my future work. Uh, my goal is to, uh, to be first to become a PhD student um, and to um, utilize that platform um, to disseminate information and technology for patients. Working with neuro patients, I think is a great, uh, will be a great benefit for me. Number one, um, just from intellectual uh, curiosity, uh, I wanna improve the nursing process. Uh, PhD will afford me that. Um, it'll give me the confidence to analyze complex situations and problems and to supplement those problems with solutions resulting from my technical training and education. My neuroscience uh, interest, um, partly, it, it comes from partly because of, I used to play football at the University of Toledo, and uh, at that time in the late 90s and early 2000s, um, CT wasn't a term that was, was thrown around. Uh, as a matter of fact, concussions um, and, uh, was not something that was really treated. It was looked at, but not necessarily really, really treated. You were just supposed to just go back and play. So because of that, I saw the um, downcline of some of the players that I played uh, with looking at them over the years and said something has to be done for this. In addition, <clears throat> excuse me, technology dissemination and neuro rehab and neuromodulation, I think it's a great field. Um, how can the MP offer support for this field? Uh, from, a, from a nurse uh, standpoint, nurses always are the intermediary uh, between um, the doctors and the patient. Uh, what nurses do is they offer a benefit to the patient uh, of providing medications, but also support and, uh, you know, information and technology for the patient. And also just to um, allow the patient to voice the concerns so they can take it back to the person who's coming up with these uh, particular plans or processes for them. Um, there's a number of studies that focus on the contribution of MPs. I won't go to them in detail, but uh, there are some highlights. Um, number one, does this process um, offer or meet the demand of success society? Uh, number two, does it offer a benefit for the patient and staff? And I think that's the case. I think the MPs can, can offer a great benefit uh, from the dissemination of technology. So we have this great product that's out there that's willing to be um, uh, placed into a patient or have a patient to, to utilize. For example, a bicycle for a Parkinson patient. So MPs can go in, they can follow up with the patient to make sure that they understand how to utilize the, the device properly. If there's any questions or concerns, they can offer support. My research will, will, will the gist of my research will focus on the support of this process and to really understand what the patient needs and how we can better implement these uh, moving forward. Um, so I talked about the example for Parkinson patients, also for SCI patients, uh, stroke patients that are affectable or intract with intractable uh, neurological disorders. So patients uh, participate in clinical trials uh, uh, and uh, new devices and plan in this patient or mechanical system. And the focus will be, again, to follow up and make recommendations for the patient uh, to do data aggregation and to be a subject matter expert and facilitator, facilitator for the patient. Uh, in addition, I can work directly with the patient to make recommendations for treatment modifications. I think all these um, patients will require prolonged review as it relates to satisfactory or unsatisfactory outcomes. Um, so the bottom line is the effectiveness of these treatments and the complications that may uh, arise as a part of it. There's a financial impact. Uh, nurse practitioners are also, um, well, we're cheaper than doctors. Uh, I think uh, Medicare is, we're paid out at 80% of the total cost in comparison to uh, MDs. Um, so there's a, there's a cost component there. Um, research into neuromodulation access and to expand the evidence of, of support neuro, neuromodulation techniques uh, is a main focus uh, in this industry. And I think that nurse practitioners can offer a benefit in that area. So my focus will concentrate on working with a multidisciplinary team of doctors or clinicians, biomedical engineers, and scientists to promote the integration of neuromodulation and also neuro rehab techniques to improve patient outcomes. Any uh, questions? Do you, you know, so for, for your, for your, your program, do you need to have a number of sort of uh, example 
projects or do you need one that's deep? And uh, I, I, I'm not quite sure how it works in nursing. Sure. Um, in the program, I would assume that I would need a number of projects um, to work on. Um, the PhD program is very in-depth. It's a, a three-year program that, that has a broad range focus. So um, I don't believe one program will work. Um, I talked with uh, Dr. Sheikh uh, initially, and this is what sparked the interest, um, but he's also um, uh, farmed me out to other uh, investigators within the FES program to, to see if I can work with them also, uh, Dennis included, um, on their programs to help facilitate my, uh, my growth within the PhD program at Case. We also have Matthew Plow on the, in the audience. Uh, maybe Matthew knows more details on uh, what kind, what, is the, what are the expectations of the PhD um, thesis uh, for nursing and nursing school? Uh, is it like a traditional PhD or it's a little different? Matthew, any thoughts? Yeah, uh, you know, the program's designed to be pretty flexible. So I think it could be focused on one project or it could be focused on, you know, multiple little projects. It just it just kind of depends on, you know, what your interests are. You sound like you have a, this kind of this broad interest in dissemination, right? Disseminating products, disseminating rehab interventions. And that's great. I think it's an understudied area. You know, one of the challenges you're going to have is, right, are there differences in these different types of dissemination? That, you know, does one project require a different strategy for dissemination versus another product? And I, that's something you're going to have to help try to try to think through here as you, as you focus, whether you want to focus on one project or multiple projects. So, I mean, e either way, you know, we, there is some flexibility to do, to do the projects that, that you want to do, but, you know, it, it needs to be obviously robust enough to, to write a dissertation about it as well. Yeah, and that, and that makes makes sense. My my thought process is that um, multiple little projects, uh, if they were available, would be great. Uh, one robust project uh, would be nice. Also, I would like to work on a number of different things. I think um, just from an interest standpoint, a curiosity standpoint, um, but ultimately, you know, I want to meet the expectations of um, a PhD candidate and then um, to pass the program. So. So one thing that comes to mind then uh, when we think of the product, then, you know, like, for example, the exercise bike is one product, but part of that project is also the wearable sensors, right? So how much of work is really done when it comes down to all of the wearable sensors for movement disorders, for, um, you know, for portable EEGs or uh, portable cardiac equipments, like, you know, how what are the different strategies that are necessary? We need to change how um, uh, reliable the patients are in wearing them. Uh, how much of work is done from the nursing standpoint uh, when it comes down to uh, deploying and, and reliably understanding the outcome of uh, wearable technology, wearable machines? Uh, I'm not, I don't know how much of, I mean, we, there is a lot of work from the scientific and signal processing standpoint, but we don't know from the nursing standpoint, is that something worth uh, including? From my standpoint, I think it, 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 it would be. We have um, devices that we work with in uh, the emergency room, these um, uh, life vests. And the folks that come out to interrogate the right life vests um, when we have those particular patients, they're typically are an MP and then a biomedical or a, a, a bioengineer type of person. Um, that will focus on um, if this device, number one, is, is it working properly? Uh, and number two, does the patient understand how to utilize um, this, this product? Because, you know, the typical RN that's, that's our staff nurse that's in, uh, in an inpatient setting does not understand. And the, from a patient standpoint, they get some training on how to utilize these, these products, but there is a learning curve there. So there has to be someone, someone who is um, essentially a subject matter expert um, that can facilitate that process. So maybe you could start with the devices which are already out there, FDA approved patients are using like wearable sensors. Then you can get a uh, step forward where you utilize the devices which are already 
made and it, they are ready to be used, uh, disseminated in patients, but they're not done yet. Like the bikes, for example, or other devices that a lot of our other FES investigators put together. And then another step would be somewhat relevant, but something which is still a lot in the research and development to how to make it more accessible. Um, yeah, absolutely. But Yeah, how can I, we utilize I, that I, for FES? Like, can we use uh, how 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 we could utilize the nursing piece and dissemination of FES technology, like like you know, cough electrodes and those. Well, there's a variety of ways. I mean, I don't know, Andy, if you could comment on some of the translational things that the center is doing, if he's there. Or I can. So uh, Andy Cornwall, who's who's showing up here, is uh, the head of a center, a VA center called VA Team. And I can't remember what Team stands for. The T is for translational, and um, it's an educational program for uh, investigators nationwide in the VA system to help them understand. The, uh, the issues in translating, uh, you know, sort of scientific discoveries into, into products. And uh, it started, I don't know, a little bit less than a year ago, I think. Do you remember, Cheryl, when it started? You're on, you're on mute. It started in January, actually. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, that might be some avenue where you where you could uh, you could take a look. I mean, that's a nationwide issue or, or you know program, and it's not really a translational program per se because we don't have money to fund projects, but we do um, have money to put on uh, training for you know people that apply to it from various VAs around the country, and. You know, translation and clinical dissemination is one of our five cores, one of our five thrusts for the FBS center, assuming that we're, our center is renewed, that is, um, which hopefully it will be. <laughs> um, so that, that's, a, that's another um, possibility if that's, what, if that's where your main interests are. And that includes a lot of different things. I mean, it includes sort of needs assessments and many different things. Um, you know, we don't do clinical trials in the, in the FES Center. We don't have that kind of uh, uh, status, but we, we get a lot of inquiries from people wanting to run their clinical trials in Cleveland. Our investigators want to figure out how to do clinical trials. So we, we refer them to some of our partners and, uh, and the hospitals. So that, that, that's maybe another possibility. Yeah, I think that the translation is to make sure that it's number one, the products are safe, but also that it, ends, it meets the demand of the end user. And yeah. the, whole, the whole nursing process uh, is designed for that to happen. Um, so from a, from, if you just uh, look from a staff nursing standpoint, they walk into the door and they uh, get treated and their expectation is that person gets to go home. Um, if you're talking about a medical device or, or some type of sophisticated uh, neuromodulation system, um, that process uh, does not escape. It still has to be there. And I think there's a great value in looking at it from a variety of standpoints of how we can benefit the end user, um, the veteran from that standpoint. Yeah. Yeah, we have a big need for um, understanding uh, sort of our needs, doing needs assessments. Like what do, what do the people with these various disorders, what do they want? And um, yeah, that, that's, a, that's maybe a, a good uh, alignment there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions? 
Uh, this was this is more of just a general comment. There, there's a there's kind of a whole science around developing around dissemination, and so uh, and nurses are cer certainly leading the way in that. But there's also other disciplines that are that are leading leading as well with with thinking about how you disseminate things. You know, measuring the the psychological constructs to see if you can change those to to promote acceptability. I mean, there's there there's a broad research. So you don't. It's not like you're gonna have to go into this to reinvent the wheel. There is there are. It's, you know, it, there's not, I, I'm not aware if there's any classes that we offer specific to that, but, you know, there's certainly a broad literature out there for it. Sure, absolutely. Uh, there there is some re, was some research done, uh, I believe in Europe, I was, was looking at it, um, where they talked about dissemination. Um, it's mostly, a lot of it, 90% of what I found was mostly in the technology side of things, information technology side of things. Um, and that's where the, the EMAR came about and all of these sophisticated um, uh, uh, applications that they utilize in hospitals. Um, but there is a great need, I think, from the standpoint of um, medical equipment. Um, and I think from a productivity and cost standpoint, I think that it can be done in a manner in which that's productive uh, for the patient, also profitable, very profitable. Anything else? Any other questions for uh, for Jonathan from anyone? Well, you know, we, we're looking forward to having you uh, in the community. I'm glad that, that you've joined. And, you know, I'm sure that uh, Osef and others can help, uh, you know, make some arrangements for various kinds of projects that you have some interest in. And um, yeah, I think maybe one of them should be uh, what I was just talking about, user needs assessments, uh, you know, how to, how to do that, how, and, and um, to be a very good, a very good mutually uh, beneficial uh, project. I agree, absolutely. Uh, you know, in conclusion, I just wanted to thank everyone uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak with you guys. Um, I know that you guys are really busy. I appreciate everyone uh, coming and to join the meeting. Um, and thankful that the people that uh, are at CASE and uh, down at the FES Center, that you guys have um, just given me the opportunity to kind of mull through my thought process. Sometimes I could be a little bit jumbled in um, my um, uh, like over organization of it, but I think that it's a really good plan. I think that this can be uh, a mutual uh, uh, benefit for both of us. So I look forward to meeting you guys in person. And uh, and I think today was great. I think it was awesome. It's good meeting you guys. Okay. Anything else, uh, Cheryl, that we need to talk about today? Uh, no, I think um, we have our next. Um, uh, second Tuesday coming up and or, I'm sorry uh, third Tuesday coming up here later this month but um, nope, that's it at this point okay so uh, ju just oh. general and like if anybody would like to collaborate please let Jonathan know that would be awesome okay all right thanks everyone have a good Thank evening you. Yep, yep. Thanks. Yes, thanks. What do you see?